So today we finished our proofs of the concurrencies related to a triangle by looking at the intersection of a triangle's altitudes as well as the intersection of a triangle's medians. So we started by seeing a proof of theorem 231, which is actually a theorem about parallelograms that we end up using more than once in the results that follow. So it has these three components. Uh, first of all, that the opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. Second, the opposite angles are congruent. And then finally, this is the one that we end up using the most because it's the most surprising, that the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect one another. And so both of, all three of these proofs really rely upon taking a parallelogram, which by its definition is defined by having two pairs of opposite parallel sides. So that's our original definition of what it means to be a parallelogram, that the green sides and the red sides are parallel lines. But we deduce from that that the opposite sides of a, of a parallelogram are congruent by cutting that parallelogram in half and then establishing that these two triangles are congruent, which we did using the all-important results about transversals to parallel lines that come from theorem 1.3.2 and saying that, well, each of the sides of this parallelogram can be thought of as a transversal cutting the other two parallel sides. And as a result, we get the congruence of this pair of angles and the congruence of this pair of angles, both from that opposite interior uh, angle theorem, 1.3.2. And then those two, combined with the common side, which is this diagonal right here, gives us the ASA congruence of this pair of triangles that we've cut the parallelogram into. And therefore, because we've shown that those two triangles are congruent, we get that their corresponding sides, and their corresponding sides are AD and BC, and then also A, B, and C, D, that those corresponding sides are congruent, proving statement number one, and then also that their corresponding angles are congruent. And so we get the congruency of this pair of angles, and then also the congruency of the sum of A and B, or the sum of alpha and beta on this diagram, which guarantees that these angles are congruent as well. And then the real big finish of this is that we also show that the, 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 sorry, the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect one another. And we did that by discovering one more congruency in this figure. We discovered that AED and CBE, that that pair of triangles are congruent triangles. We did that again um, by the ASA criterion, using again the opposite interior angles theorem, 1.3.2, to justify the congruencies of these angles, and then we used theorem 2.3.1, the first thing we proved about the congruency of the opposite sides of a parallelogram, to justify the angle-side-angle -angle congruency of this pair of triangles. And as a result, all the lengths that are in the middle, the lengths of these diagonals, are exactly the corresponding sides of those congruent triangles, and therefore the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect one another. That's an important result. We end up seeing it a couple more times before we're done with this set of proofs. In particular, we show in 2.3.6 that the altitudes of any triangle are concurrent. Remember that the altitudes are the lines joining each vertex of a triangle to the opposite side at a 90 degree angle. And this is a really clever proof, because it takes our original triangle ABC and it situates it inside of a larger triangle, we call it DEF, and that larger triangle is constructed by sketching lines that are parallel to the opposite side passing through each vertex. So EF, for example, is parallel to BC and it passes through the vertex at A, and so on and so on. And because we've constructed a bunch of parallel sides, we get a bunch of parallelograms. For example, ABCE is a parallelogram. And because it's a parallelogram, um, we know that its opposite sides are congruent, according to the theorem that we just saw. So for example, AB and CE are congruent one to another, and BC and AE are congruent to one another. But then the real genius in this is that we do that same thing again using a second parallelogram that shares a common side. So BC 
is also a common side of the parallelogram that's formed here, ABCF. And therefore, because that's a parallelogram, we also conclude that its pair of opposite sides are congruent. But there again, we've sort of bridged the gap. We know now that AE is congruent to AF because both of them are congruent to BC. And so the upshot of all of that is that that shows that AE and AF are congruent. And therefore, by construction, and again, by use of the uh, theorem 1.3.2 about transversals to parallel lines, um, we know that this segment, AG, which was an altitude of ABC, is also a perpendicular bisector of the triangle DEF that passes through the side at EF. So that's the real genius of this proof, is that it discovers a larger triangle whose perpendicular bisectors are exactly the altitudes of the smaller triangle in the middle. And therefore, because we already knew that the perpendicular bisectors of a triangle are concurrent, that then implies that the altitudes of our other triangle are concurrent. So this is a really clever proof. It takes our small triangle and its altitudes, and it blows it up into a bigger triangle and its perpendicular bisectors. From there, we turn to the medians of a triangle, which starts with the midline theorem, which says that if I join the two midpoints of the midpoints of two sides of a triangle, that that segment is, on the one hand, parallel to the other side, and also is half the length of the opposite side. So that midline theorem is not something that we proved in class, but it is something that we need to prove this next lemma that's the one that we do use to show that the medians of a triangle are concurrent. And that's the lemma that says that the medians of a triangle trisect one another. So what that means is that at the point that two medians intersect, so that would be this point H on the figure over here at the right, that that, that point cuts each median into two segments which stand in a ratio of 2 to 1 uh, to one another. So to the left of H is a segment which has twice the length of the segment to the right of H. And then likewise is also true on the other median. And so how we prove that is by using the midline theorem to make a conclusion about the midlines of two different triangles. So here again is a common trope in a lot of our proofs, is that we use a common side to two different figures. So before we use the common side to two different parallelograms, here we're going to use a common side to two different triangles, and we construct it in medians in two different ways. So first of all, thinking about BC as one side of triangle ABC and constructing its median, the midline theorem tells me that that median is half the length of BC. But then, and this is a clever part, we use that same side BC again, but this time as a side of the triangle CBH, where H is the place where these medians intersect. We use that to construct the median of that triangle. And then this is the really clever part of the argument, is that those two sides, DE and KL, are both perpendicular to the same thing, sorry, both parallel to the same thing. They're both parallel to BC, and therefore they are parallel to one another. And they also each have a length which is half the length of BC, and therefore they have the same length as one another. So DE and KL are a pair of parallel and congruent sides, which according to another theorem, 2.3.5, makes DEKL here a parallelogram. And because DEKL is a parallelogram, the diagonals bisect one another, according to 2.3.1. So that's what unlocked here the bisecting of the diagonals of this parallelogram and the fact that half of those the, that those diagonals are constructed as parts of the midlines of the triangle CBH is the ingredients necessary to show that those medians are being trisected uh, where they intersect in this triangle. So that proves that the medians trisect one another. So why does that imply that they all intersect in a common point? Well, here again is an argument where we construct two different pairs of medians and find their intersection point, and then discover that those intersection points are actually the same. 
So in our first triangle, the black triangle here, we construct the medians passing through the points A and B, and we get an intersection point that we call G prime. And then we do it again using the medians passing through B and C instead, and they have an intersection point G. And the important part about this is that there's no way in a triangle to construct uh, two different pairs of medians unless one of the medians in that pair is shared to both figures. That's the median BE. So that appears in both diagrams here. And therefore, the points in question, G prime and G, uh, are both points on the segment BE. But because lemma 2.4.3 guarantees that those medians in both of these figures are going to trisect one another, that implies in particular that the length from E to G prime and the length from E to G is going to be the same, because it's going to be one-third of the length from E to B in each case. And so what we get are two points, G and G prime, that are the same distance away from E, and because they both lie on the same side of E along the segment to B, that means that they're the same point. And that point, therefore, is in common to all three of the medians of this triangle, and therefore the three medians meet at a point of concurrency.